Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward to what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, after four weeks of a steady upward climb and 10 all-time highs during that period, the stock market finally hit a bump last week as sellers came in and volatility picked up. While there was a lot of news out of China, the Fed, Afghanistan, and the coronavirus, it was really just time for the market to begin to stall. But the giddy bulls, well, they don't die easily, and there were actually, interday, three huge upside moves during this relatively mild downside week. Monday, weak China data started the stock market to the downside early, but then there was a five-hour upside surge, which pushed the market to another all-time high as Apple and Microsoft led the techs on the upside. Tuesday, more news out of China as uh, their markets fell very hard on news of antitrust crackdowns. And Home Depot's earnings, they were not great. And the S&P 500 fell to a level of minus 62 points during the day. But then the buyers came back and that loss was cut in half. Wednesday, the market was choppy waiting for the Fed minutes to come out. And the market was really on edge as the reverse repos that night hit a record $1.16 trillion. Uh, Fed insanity keeps increasing this liquidity or liquidity trap. And uh, this uh, new money uh, that comes out all of the time uh, has caused the Fed to have to create a new facility uh, in that repo market where they, can, where they take on some $500 billion uh, in uh, reverse repos. And uh, they are actually talking right now about increasing that level. You can actually learn a ton about that market. And I listen to Stephen Van Meter a lot on YouTube. He really knows his stuff, and he can help you a lot on understanding this uh, Fed action or the repo, reverse repo market, interest rates, dollar shortage, all of those things. I think it's uh, it, that's a great uh, a YouTube channel to watch, and I do all the time. He's really intelligent. And uh, this uh, Fed action that's going on, as he explains, is it's really setting up no reason to sell treasuries. Is You can just go into the repo market and get paid. Uh, and uh, that is pushing interest rates down on the long end and flattening out that yield curve. And you might note that the banks have gotten weak. There have been declines of some 5 to 8% just in the last several days uh, in the bank stocks, and that's about that flattening yield curve. And, of course, the financial index is important to the overall market. Um, some uh, Fed heads, uh, as the uh, news came out, uh, about the Fed minutes, uh, they were talking about tapering. In fact, uh, the majority of them did discuss that it was likely that tapering would come sometime this year. Some talked about it next year, and some basically had no idea. And they're just admitting that they don't really know where the economy is going and how all of these other uh, aspects of the Delta variant or China uh, slowing down or, or anything else about uh, this uh, a crazy manipulated world that we live in, uh, what all of that is going to mean. So uh, the Fed, which runs the economy, basically is clueless. Late in the day, when I think this all sunk in, the S&P 500 on Wednesday fell 40 points to the downside. And that was kind of the beginning of what's look, what looks like some sloppier action here in the stock market. Thursday, overnight, the market moved down again, but the dip buyers came back. S&P 500 had been down 
47 points, another big early decline, but then uh, moved up to up nine points. So it was another big uh, rally. Uh, it ended with small gains on the index, uh, on, the, on the, the main indexes, S&P 500, NASDAQ, but it was terrible breath. I mean, more than two to one on the downside. So just gives you an idea how those mega caps are affecting the market. Material stocks, they got hammered as iron ore and copper are breaking down in a big way. And this is the China syndrome that is going on uh, as their crackdowns there hit the economy. And that is likely to spill over uh, if, it, if it isn't already into other economies and uh, other markets. And I'm going to show you more about that later in the show uh, as we do some review on the China market and some China ADRs and what that means for the U.S. Friday, well, there was more China news as they extended uh, regulations protecting uh, data. Uh, the Hong Kong market uh, fell again. Now, Hong Kong uh, is down 20% uh, since February, so some big declines there. I'll show you the FXI is down 30% uh, when uh, uh, we'll show that a little bit later in the show. And RV is going to cover some of that uh, in this week's uh, international market video of which we'll show you a preview so uh, we had a weak overnight uh, market uh, and then the market started to come back again actually that was helped by the Chinese ADRs which reversed to the upside and then the tech stocks follow they began to move up and the stock market has moved to the upside here on Friday uh, up about uh, two-thirds of a percentage point uh, here at midday and there's still a lot of hours left to go in a market that we think is going to continue to struggle. Stock market action followed our expected short-term pattern, so we thought it would come down uh, into midweek, uh, and the indexes fell about 3%. That was in line with expectations, and now it's an important time. Uh, there is a bigger correction looming in this market. Of course, some might call 3% down not a correction, and it's really not. I mean, it's just a little blip to the downside. But now, as we look at our work, it's time for the bulls. They have to prove their mettle. Um, and they actually should test the highs right now uh, based on the patterns we're looking at. But the risks are growing of a, more, of a bigger downside correction, and I have more about that to show you later in the show. Stocks uh, for the week, uh, after some big declines and good rebounds, they're the major indexes, S&P 500, NASDAQ, are only at fractional losses for the week. The Russell lost about 3.5%, Dow down about 1.5%. Bond market, 30 years, they're uh, up a point. Uh, as I said, that uh, there's a flattening of the yield curve going on. It's not really good for the financial sector. The TNX, that's the 10-year, lost about five basis points. That's a down to about 1.24. That's up from 1.12, an important level down at that 1.12. Something very strange will be going on if that level breaks. And that would, in my opinion, only come in a condition of very hard stock market selling. So we're looking for interest rates to be ticking up, but maybe not immediately. Gold for the week, up about two bucks. Silver down 74 cents as the industrial metals get hit very hard on China. Copper down about 12 cents on the week. So that's a big decline. And if you watch Future Speak, that is our member video on uh, 24 different futures contracts, every Wednesday um, we showed you the real bad pattern there in the copper market uh, and likely to see lower prices in there. Dollar gains over 1% on the week, and when you look at gold, that's actually, gold had a good performance relative to the dollar and other markets. So there is some money moving into gold right now, uh, and that's good relative strength. Uh, that uh, big week for the dollar was really expected. We thought that the pattern for gold for uh, the dollar was higher, and we actually still think it is higher. So uh, we'll be looking for uh, dollar strength, which overall generally comes as a safety bid, uh, and uh, that could start to disturb gold again. And again, it could mean that the stock market's got some problems. Uh, 
Oil, it was down 210 on the week, and we actually had, uh, in our Future Speak shows, when oil was a lot higher, talked about it moving down towards the $60 level, it got under 62 this week, and we still see risks to the downside. Uh, as we do not see a low till uh, late September or October for the oil market. So you're going to want to watch that Future Speak show to see that detailed analysis. Um, we have uh, coming up uh, in this show, uh, just in a few minutes, we're going to give you a little preview of Arby's work on the international markets. Uh, I'm going to bring you a piece on this uh, China market and what I consider to be the China syndrome. Uh, that could really disturb world equity markets. And uh, then I'm going to bring you some uh, good analysis on the one to three month view in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, uh, which I think you're going to find very interesting. Uh, I want to make sure uh, that you go to askslim.com. Take a look at that website. Uh, if you're brand new, become a free member. Uh, or uh, you can write to Matt at AskSlim.com for our membership specials. Uh, if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe to this channel. Click that notification bell, uh, and you'll know when we uh, have put up videos, which we do regularly. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Like that video, that does uh, help us. Uh, if you're uh, a Twitter user, follow us at AskSlim. And uh, I think you'll uh, enjoy some of the things that I put up there uh, on Twitter. All right, well, uh, what happens uh, every other week is that uh, Arby does a great video looking at 11 different international markets. And then what we share is a preview with you where uh, we look at, uh, we share uh, some of Arby's work. Uh, this uh, week we're going to share with you uh, the South Korean Kospi and the um, French uh, CAC 40, uh, as they say there, the Cacaron. And uh, that uh, will, I think, give you a good idea of what our cycle analysis uh, looks like uh, as Arby does some fantastic work. Arby, a great expert in cycle analysis. Uh, Matt is getting up there too, really becoming an expert in cycle analysis also. And we are working on expanding our analytical team. So I think you're going to love a lot of the things that we bring forward at this time. Here is a look at this preview at the international markets. And then when this is over with, I'm going to continue this discussion looking at China. Let's look at the Kospi, which is South Korea. And this has had a breakdown. And this is something that is very important to note here. You can see that we had a key weekly low here at uh, 3103. We have now violated that key low and we also have a turn down in our weekly momentum here as well, which is why I've added in this red colored arrow. So all of this is really quite bearish and we are looking for a move down into this major 38.2 to the major 50, which comes in from around uh, 29.20 to around 27.90 out into the end of the year. So this is a, a very risky pattern here in the Kospi. If we look at the daily chart, you can see this uh, really quite clearly. So we've had uh, obviously a very sharp move on the downside. Note that we do have a mid-cycle low due right here. So what we look for is a rally off of this mid-cycle low to form a bear flag in the overall context of a negative slim ribbon. And then you, you look for follow through back down. So that's really what we'll be watching for uh, very closely here. The next short-term low is due 9.2 to 9.16 here. So this is the CAC 40. And what I want to highlight here is this rollover in the weekly momentum followed by this rollback up. Now, when that happens, you always want to take note of that because it's telling you that something has changed here in terms of the overall outlook. When we saw this rollover, we were uh, thinking that we were in this corrective period on this uh, minor cycle here. But as soon as that turned up, it told us that we clearly weren't and we were still in the rising phase of the minor as well as the rising phase of the dominant. So what we're looking for right now is really a bull flag to form here to form that mid cycle low and then to get one more push back to the upside up to this 70 72 level here in the CAC 40. So that's the overall picture. Let's go ahead and, and look at the daily chart. So this is the daily chart here for the CAC 40. And what we're also uh, watching for here is just for a pullback likely down into this 
66 uh, 57 down to the 60 590 zone and then looking for another push back up this is still forming a higher cycle high and very likely a higher cycle low versus the prior low so under those conditions you look for new swing highs to form in that next cycle the next short term low is also due 96 to 916 Thank you, Arvi, and great work there. Interesting, I see the, uh, when we look at the Kakaong, um, there's a time period ahead where it looks like there's going to be a market correction. And uh, that overall looks like a fairly bullish pattern, as you see, uh, but some corrective period right ahead. And that could be uh, important information as we discuss uh, right now, looking at some other markets. So I want to talk about the China syndrome right now. I think this is uh, some important information uh, as we uh, begin to consider um, what uh, the market looks like here for China. So we're going to start out by looking at the FXI. And this is uh, the, uh, uh, the US ADR, I'm sorry, uh, ETF uh, for the Chinese large caps. And uh, we have been in quite a decline uh, recently. Interesting, I want you to see right in here. Uh, for those of you that are new, th these are cycle brackets on the bottom. And the, what those are is, is a drawing tool. It gives you some sense around the repeating rhythms in the market. You can see that. These uh, vertical uh, lines that you see in here are pointing to significant lows here in the market and it shows you how there's a specific rhythm in here that we're looking at. These uh, cycle brackets, uh, they are set right in here at 30 bars uh, and we don't, the 30 bars is not uh, anything that uh, we, we put in there because it's some common length, it's actually not. Um, and, and cycle analysis is very subjective. So each each of these um, symbols that we look at and do this work on, which are more than 400, um, there are uh, e each one of them is unique, and our work is done manually. So uh, uh, while it's very mechanical in, in what we do, uh, it all, is all manual work. So what's interesting in here is that you can see the cycle in here made way back over here, uh, over a year ago, this head and shoulders top. And the measurement was way down over here. The distance from the head to the neckline is the same thing as the distance from the breakdown to the uh, head and shoulders measurement. It did a great job getting down under there. Then you had this beautiful diamond formation in there, and then the bullishly configured cycle. This is actually a big inverted head and shoulders, and you can see how well that worked in there also. So what are we looking at now uh, when we look at this China market? The, um, the market has had a severe decline from this level over here to the lows right over here uh, in, on 727, the market fell about 30% on the downside. So just a massive move. I'm gonna show you some comparisons about what that means uh, compared to the US market in, in just a moment. But I wanna look at some of their stocks also. So if you look at the rhythm in here, this is called a bullishly configured cycle. The probability is high it will get above that level and it moved very much higher, all the way up to this 100% Fib extension through these shorter term Fib extensions right in there, and then uh, began to top. And this is actually uh, a kicker pattern that makes up an evening star. It was preceded by an engulfing. There were a lot of signs of topping going on in here. This is our momentum indicator, the reversal scout that you see there. And uh, this is, it's a little noisier on this chart than it is on most. And when it's in a bullish or rising configuration, you're li most likely to get upward moves. And when it's in negative, you're most likely to get downside moves. The downside moves in an uptrend will be smaller and the upside moves will be larger. Here you can see where momentum turned negative right over here, how it brought the impulse on the downside. It went into a rally right over here, as you can see, 
failed in this resistance area in what we call a left-hand trans translation, where it makes its peak way on the left side of the cycle. When it does that and breaks down under the key level, it projects down to the timing of the next low, which is plus or minus a few bars from this ideal low, which has it coming down into sometime in mid-November to mid-December. So China, when you look at this, is in pretty bad shape. Now, if you watch our international markets complete video uh, where um, the uh, we share the Shanghai uh, index in there. This is, a, of course, a head and shoulders top that you could see, and it projects to much lower. It's clearer in that index that Ivy will present to you if you watch that, that video. So this is a, a really bad pattern and really speaks to the fact that while China has fallen 30% already, the probability of it being done on the downside is low. The probability of it continuing down for another couple of months is high. And China is uh, interesting that they're willing to crack down on their markets and economies and deal with excesses where the United States is not willing to do that at all. They're the communist country, right? Really bizarre. Let's take a look at a few of their ADRs and see how that compares in here. So we're going to look at BABA, Alibaba Group, and uh, you can see in here that head and shoulders top that formed in there. Uh, a little bit odd one, but again, the analysis is really clear. This dashed line is the FXI that I just showed you. So you can see near the cycles in, uh, in Alibaba are a bit different than the cycles in the FXI, but still, this important level came right there together. This level, this was the low on the Alibaba right there, whereas this was the low in the Chinese index. You could see where that lines up and how these are somewhat odd of phase. They were both going down together here and you get that slam on the downside and they're both going down together now. This low points to out here potentially in October to again out in November. So there's a lot more downside likely in here. This comes down and hits that 100% Fib extension, but there's a 161.8% Fib extension down under there and that is uh, a possibility that it's going to continue down to those levels. It is way too low soon to be a bottom and likely to continue to see failed you might probably get a bounce in here in a failed rally and then moving to the downside again so that is a look at Alibaba following pretty closely to the patterns that we see in in the FXI in the China market a huge decline in here the stock is down 50% already uh, and uh, a good example of what could happen uh, when a bear market hits, which, you know, so many traders out there have never seen a bear market, uh, especially those um, uh, crypto traders. Uh, well, they've seen some bear markets in there, but they think that markets only go up. Uh, and uh, this, this shows you that there are still bear markets out there. Uh, let's take a look at Baidu right in here. And uh, look at that, Baidu down from 354 all the way down to 138, loses about two thirds of its value. This points to a decline actually out, uh, both, of, both of these cycles come out here into November. We're looking for potentially getting down here uh, to lower levels as you can see. And this is at least a couple of months of downside risk here in Baidu. So if it gets a rally, it is very likely to be moving to the downside again. Uh, and we'll just look at one more. How about JD? So you get an idea for this. This is JD. Look at this beautiful pattern back over here, the head and shoulders. It comes down and hits the measurement, then gets into this massive bull run, runs up from 20 to 108, and then falls from 108 down to this level here, about 60. So it loses 40 something percent of its value. Notice the beautiful cyclical rhythms. And here again, this is FXI and this is JD. And these point to declines out here into October and November. So we're expecting even lower prices in here. Look at the beautiful action right here where the reversal scout, this is a proprietary indicator, um, turns down and it gives you the big downside impulse. Look where it turned up here and gives you the big upside impulse again right over here. And it turns down right here after this brief rebound in this left-hand translation. You want to learn about that, what that means. Please do take our cycle analysis workshop at AskSlim.com. Uh, and uh, we're going to offer a special on that pretty soon. So please do uh, uh, listen for that special coming in just the next couple of weeks. 
This uh, points to lower prices. You can see you get some bounces in here. It really is likely to fail. So that's a look at uh, three of the uh, Chinese ADRs and FXI. That's uh, really gives you a sense for the kind of declines that they've seen there in China. And uh, as they really clamp down on the excesses in their market and try to protect their data, uh, and uh, I'm not making any statement whether what they're doing is right or wrong, uh, it uh, just shows you the dominance that they have uh, over uh, their markets, which puts risk, of course, into other world markets. And if China slows down the second largest economy in the world, uh, and it ha has been slowing down, it, it is going to affect other things. But I, I just don't want to just say that <clears throat> without having some proof about that. Let's take a look at a chart in here. I'm just going to bring over another chart. I have to make this fit in here because it's a little bit large. Uh, and uh, you'll see right in here as I bring this in, this is a very interesting chart because what I have here is China, which is this uh, line uh, line chart right in here, uh, that that is, let me just get this pointer, it'll be a little better. You can see that line chart right there is the comparison. That is uh, the Chinese market, which has had this big decline. And this is the S&P 500 right over here. And the red arrows in here are the Chinese peaks in their market. We're going all the way back here to 2007 and I want you to see where the Chinese market peaked right over here and what it meant for the US markets. Do I have a little more data in here? But no, that's everything I have right now. So let's take a look at what happened. Here in 2007 the Chinese market peaked and then accelerated on the downside. The US market peaked somewhat simultaneously and of course we know there was a huge washout there as we had the great financial crisis. Here the Chinese market peaked as you can see and then it moved sharply to the downside. It peaked about the same time the US market did and this was in line with the Euro crisis over here and the stock market had a fairly sizable correction for the S&P 500 during that period right there. It was a good correction or pullback. And then you can see in here, this is interesting because here China had like three peaks and had some modest declines in there. It didn't really affect the U.S. market at all. So I kind of wanted to uh, just, uh, let me just grab this and show you where those three peaks were. And you could see that it didn't have a great effect in here. And the declines in China were not all that great either. So uh, that had minimal effect. But then when you go back over here and you see this uh, big peak in here in the Chinese market, in uh, April, it then the U.S. stock market uh, began to roll over, and then you got two moves to the downside in here that were uh, what we call kind of mini bears right in there. So that is uh, that time frame where the Chinese market led the U.S. stock market down. Here you can see the peak here in China. It peaked well and well ahead of the U.S. market, and then you ended up having. Uh, this this was the temper tantrum. Interesting, uh, the relationship right now is the, the U.S. Uh, Fed, central bank, begins getting ready to pull back on their uh, purchases of uh, government securities. So uh, that, uh, with that time frame in there was a, a fairly large decline that we saw in the market where the S&P 500 moved down from about 295 down to about 234. So that was a sizable decline. China stayed weak, but then they both got strong together. Here was the China peak, and now it's fallen about 30% based on what's going on. And look at this right over here. The stock market in the United States is completely ignoring it. But is it going to be like one of these where the big breaks in this China stock market brought actual declines in the U.S. market? I would bet that's the case. Uh, and that uh, all of a sudden we're going to get some selling that comes in here. It might be fast, it might be quick, uh, but it's not going to be small. And uh, something co uh, corrective enough to bring some pain uh, in the U.S. markets. I wanted to show you that. I thought that was really important uh, so that you could see that uh, over this last 14 years, there were multiple occasions where the Chinese market broke either in line or ahead of the U.S. market and the U.S. market eventually followed. Right now, the U.S. market, about six, seven months past that Chinese peak, 
is uh, doing about as good as it ever does, uh, I think that based on what we're looking at of a, uh, a, a problem for the stock market moving forward, this is a pretty good sign of that. I say this China syndrome is significant and there is trouble ahead for the U.S. market. Watch out for the coming bear. That's, uh, I think you'll see fairly soon. All right, we're going to show you the stock market, uh, the next one to three month view. But uh, at this point, because uh, there are so many people out there that are short term traders in the stock market, I just wanted to give you a peek at one of our fantastic tools, which is the Stock Index Report live stream. Uh, and we, our live streams are growing. Uh, we have eight of them right now, and we're about getting ready to add three more. But this one is really unique in that it's a 15-minute chart with our proprietary information in there. Uh, what we uh, do is give this every day. And this is running live right now as, as I'm showing it to you. And this line in here is the reversal scout. So this one, this line over here is yesterday. And you can see where the reversal scout turns down. And that tells you about the direction you want to be in in the market. And then when it started to turn up, then you can see what it gave you right over here into today. These red zones are when the darker red is the significant resistance area. This should be the spot that the stock market begins to struggle. It uh, actually stalled in there this morning. So this is the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. And you can see all three of them moving up. It's clear the resistance level, which is lower in the, in the NASDAQ, is causing some problems in here and the uh, upward movement in here is continuing in the Russell. Uh, note that uh, the yellow zones, those are acceleration zones. The odds are when it gets in the acceleration zone, it's going to move through it. In fact, we're running about probabilities of about making it through by over 80%. Uh, every time it gets into the yellow zone. This was an easy one. It was a small one here in the NASDAQ. And you can see the Russell uh, it was lagging a little bit behind and then all of a sudden took off and easily moved through. And now is moving into resistances. These are pretty good resistance zones that we're looking at. And based on the weakness that we've seen in the stock market, I wouldn't be surprised to see the stock market not be able to get through these resistance levels and then begin to give some uh, movement to the downside. Right now, S&P 500, as I do this recording, just past the midday period, uh, is up about 33 points. The NASDAQ is up about 130. Uh, and the Russell's uh, up uh, about 31 points, and that's the strongest of the indexes, up about 1.5%. So this is the amazing SIR live stream. It helps keep you on the right side of the market and helps you decide what locations that the stock market could struggle or accelerate. And man, the acceleration zones will pay you because they give you a sense for the biggest moves in either direction. In this case, the lower numbers uh, today, because the market's been up all day, are not in play, uh, but they could be later on. So that is a look at the SIR live stream, uh, just a uh, fantastic service that we offer. You can uh, get the SIR live stream by uh, becoming a level two, three, or four member. Please go to our website. You can see everything included in our memberships at AskSlim.com. And we have specials that are available. Uh, and uh, you can, if you're a first time uh, member signing up, or if you're upgrading, uh, Matt can give you a special on that. So write to Matt at AskSlim.com. That's it for my little preview of for short term traders in the stock market. Here is our uh, look at the stock market for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ looking out the next one to three months. So last week we showed the short term on the NASDAQ and we thought it would come down into sometime midweek and then begin the rally again. That has happened. Now what I want to show you is the um, a little longer term view and I'm going to look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And uh, the real focus right now is um, has, uh, you know, has the market actually set up a bigger correction or is that just a little correction we saw it and it's about to explode to new highs again? Well, if you look at the market today, you might say, well, it's all over and it's ready to start to move up again. That little correction we had was it and the buyers are back in control. But I have a lot of doubt about that. And uh, when I look at the mega cap um, stock patterns, uh, stocks like uh, Apple and Microsoft and uh, Facebook and Google and Amazon, those stocks have got corrective periods out in front of them. 
and it's very likely we're going to see uh, them start. Amazon is actually a really bad looking pattern and some of the other ones uh, have just given little signs of rolling over but not that significant. But they point out into September and even towards the end of September for some corrections and I think that is going to be uh, leading the market uh, into a uh, m m into a, a sharper correction uh, that, uh, than we've seen so far. We had looked for the stock market to correct uh, starting late June, early July, and then correct into August, but then we saw these patterns extend, and the mega cap patterns extend, and that really pushed it out into September. We just respond to what the market shows us. Uh, let's move off of JD there and move into SPX, the S&P 500. So here is the cycle analysis on the S&P 500. And uh, what we're looking at are the cycle rhythms on the bottom. There's a minor cycle, an intermediate cycle, a major, and a like a super major cycle way out over here. When all three of these are in alignment, there should be a big correction. That happened way back over here. I'll just uh, blow that out a little bit more. As you could see, as uh, we got into that period in the pandemic, and uh, there were all of these alignments to the downside that just uh, coincided with uh, that pandemic. It made it very risky on the downside, those alignments. And now where we are is right in here, where uh, we're, we're getting this hammer, this, I'm sorry, hanging man. I want to say hammer, but I've got people writing me that uh, uh, about uh, hanging men versus hammer. And uh, a hanging man uh, is at the top, a hammer is at the bottom. And this, this pattern right over here, a hanging man, is when the body is about one third of the size of the tail, as you can see right in here, or the shadow. And what the hanging man means is that the buyers are likely to get hung. So uh, that's the pattern we have right now. And this happens at peaks often, uh, and it happens at bottoms often, uh, where you have uh, a lot of buyers come in after big declines. When you're at, at a high of the market, it is a hanging man and is warning that there is likely to be some further correction to the downside, further movement to the downside. So uh, this uh, time frame in here extends out into September, uh, and we originally were pointing to a uh, decline, and then we revised that. So this yellow zone over here uh, was originally, and these projections were pointing down to an 11% decline into August, and that was revised to 53 to 7.7%. .7 uh, decline and we're projecting that now into mid-September based on the mega cap patterns. So we expect that this rally that we're having right now will begin to struggle. It is likely they will take out new highs before they move uh, back into this corrective phase over here and it is likely that we will see at least a couple of weeks of sharp downside moves some, some, sometime out here in September. September seasonably, seasonally is a, a, a month when there are often some sizable declines. I want to say that because of this translation, a 24-week high, that is exceptional strength and we have this really good upside momentum. It, 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 what it says to us is that were we to continue this correction as we expect, then when you get past this period here, you get into another rally phase, which should take you out some couple of months yet to even higher levels. So we're looking for a correct, correction in here, uh, which m relatively modest, 53 to 7.7%, .7%, and then another upside move. When I look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, which I think is going to lead the way on the downside in here, it's really interesting because uh, it has three hanging men uh, right in there. Let me just get that message out for you to see. There are one, two, three hanging men in the market right over here as it gets up into the FIB extension. And uh, this uh, time frame that we're looking right in here, we were looking for a minimum decline of 13% from the peak, and that was revised to 5 to 8% on the downside. And based on the mega caps, we're looking for it to come down into uh, the mid-September period. One, two, three hanging men going on here. It means the last three weeks you get all of these buyers 
that can't make the market go to new highs of, a, of any significance at all. Still momentum strong in here. We would expect that it's going to roll over by a little bit. But again, the probabilities are that after you get a pullback here into September, that it will be moving up again to new highs. So uh, very unlikely that we're going to see any kind of a bull market peak for some months based on we're looking at that. So the one to three month view for these indexes are down for about a month and then up for a couple of months is what it really looks like. And once we have our anchor points in here, we'll uh, be able to project as to where we think the upside is going to be uh, in there. Didn't want to do that. Uh, so that is a look at the NASDAQ. Overall, we're looking for this rally that we're getting in the stock market to nudge out new highs and then uh, begin to peak again and move to the downside with a lot of risk, in our opinion, in the market uh, for the next uh, 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 at least three to five weeks. If you didn't watch it, watch our analysis we did earlier in the show uh, on China, the China syndrome, uh, where we showed the relationship between China and the stock market uh, in here in the U.S. and that it, it is likely that it is going to be uh, meaningful in a negative way uh, for the U.S. stock market, maybe uh, for world markets. Maybe that's why interest rates are so low. Uh, the, the bond market is moving up and uh, why the dollar money is moving into the dollar. All of those things are important factors in here uh, for uh, what we think will be a uh, period uh, of a lot of choppy and much more volatility, uh, choppy markets and much more volatility going forward. That's it for this show for the week. I hope you found the information to be extremely valuable. Uh, make sure uh, that you uh, go to our level one special and you can get uh, that $30 uh, for uh, the coming uh, quarter. Uh, go to AskSlim.com and explore that uh, website. I think you'll find it extremely interesting if you've never been there. Become a free member. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel uh, uh, here on YouTube. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you watch our member videos in that playlist there. Uh, follow us on Twitter at AskSlim and for information on our specials, please do write to Matt at AskSlim.com. I want you to be so careful. It is so crazy out there and I'm always wishing you Great trading.